grace that was on my life. I had no idea that I would have to go through a series of events no so i fell out of college and then the next thing that happened i was staying with this lady i could not afford to rent on to stay on darm i could not afford to rent a whole so house this lady started to tell me that i can no longer stay at her home i was miles away from home had no one that was there with me the only thing i had was just that red sheet that was my altar so i used my red sheet to become a prior altar and i would lay there and pray for hours there were days i did not eat because i was fasting and I'm going to take to the point where I almost got raped. I was going from house to house to the point where I got married. I started a church. I have two churches. I'm married. Life is just somehow going okay. And then Jezebel came in and destroyed my church. I'm going to share so Joseph. Joseph was thrown in a pit where he was hidden. Then he was thrown into jail where he was hidden. If you remember John the Baptist, John the Baptist was left in the desert for a very long time for years before he actually started to prophesy and declare the word of the Lord so, so you're isolated to know the voice of God you are left alone to know God so you hello everyone welcome back to prophet's diary I'm Shani Beckford prophetess Shani Beckford as some of you may know me and in episode 3 I'm going to share with you in on relocation of the prophet when the prophet has to relocate when the prophet it becomes a misfit when the prophet gets to a strange country and marries in that country it's going to be epic in this episode but before we go any further I want you to go ahead if, if the past two episodes has been a blessing to you or if you can relate to anything that I have shared throughout my journey I want you to go ahead and leave a comment leave your views let's have a conversation in the comment section also please make sure that you have subscribed to our channels for more on this episode and and also for more content on teaching and informative videos if you find this video interesting be sure to like the video and also be sure to share with a friend or a family I want you to stay tuned up next we're going to start on episode 3 Welcome back guys, I'm Shani Bickford and today I'm going to be sharing with you on how I got into Montego Bay and what happened. Now, the Bible tells us in the book of Mark chapter 6 verse 4 to 5 that a prophet is without honor except in his own country. So you guys would have learned from the past two episodes that I was living in Kingston and St. Catherine at different intervals and I had got to a point where I had I had no money remaining, a little to no money remaining I had nowhere to stay I have come to the place of basically being homeless more than once no I was at a place where I had to move because it was not working for me and as I said in the last episode that there was a prophetess lady I used to attend her school of the prophet now there are many people that actually say that school of the prophet it was never biblical and it does not make sense because you can't teach someone to prophesy no the Bible does show share on, uh, on accounts of school of the prophets in Bethel, in Shiloh, with Samuel and the sons of the prophets. So this is something that is actually biblical. The whole reasoning behind the school of the prophets is not to teach people how to prophesy. That's something the Holy Spirit can do and only he can do that job. But school of the prophets helps you to understand the word of God, understand the methods or the channels through which the Holy Spirit speaks to you. It helps to bring you into a place of being able to nurture your gifting, tuning the frequency of your prophetic gifts so you can hear God even clearer and in a crisp manner. So there's so many different things that School of the Prophets can actually teach someone, the different levels and dimensions of the prophetic, the different types of prophetic ministries. And this school has helped me tremendously in the beginning of my journey. Now, the founder of the school, who was a, who was a mentor at that time, had said to me, okay, um, the Holy Spirit says it's time for you to move to Montego Bay. Now that is a couple of that's that's a couple of miles away from Kingston. It's a long journey. And I, I basically knew almost no one in Montego Bay. There's a young lady that I had met through School of the Prophets and prior conferences, and she said that I could come and stay with her for a while, and absolutely I did that. I got to Montego Bay, it was a strange country, it was a strange land, I didn't know anyone there basically. 
and when I got into Montego Bay, I had 1500 Jamaican dollars left to my name. Guys, I had no money in my account, I had no savings, I was zeroed. I was at the point of being on empty. When I got to Montego Bay, I had about 1500 Jamaican dollars. If you're watching from the United States, that's about 10 US dollars maybe. And I know some of you may be saying, oh, but that can't do anything. How are you even going to survive? Okay, so here's what happened. When God brings you to a place of completely complete brokenness, a place of having nothing, having no one, having no help, it brings you to that point where you have to begin to rely on God. And this is what God wants for us as prophets and prophetic voices. He wants us to be 100% reliant on Him. It brings you to a place of humility and a divine submission to the Holy Spirit. It's not to break you, it's not to destroy you, but it is to keep you on your knees and on your face seeking the presence and the grace of God so I came into Montego Bay one of the first things that happened when I got there to my friend's house as soon as I went through the gates um, I just looked across just trying to see all that was happening around and when I looked I remember seeing that there was a shop that was next door to my house and this is going to be relevant in just a few minutes there was a shop across there was a business store across from the house and I saw this um, this man that was staring at me I ignored and I just went to um, I just went to the actual house that I was supposed to stay of course when I got here it was a bit strange I had no money I didn't know anyone I had no idea what was I going to do or what to expect while I was being while I was there and one of the things that I've come to learn is that um, based on what we just shared in Mark chapter 6 and 4 that a prophet is without honor except in his own country sometimes it takes the Holy Spirit bringing you into a strange place where you do not know anyone where you have no money there's no family there's no friends when you get to this place of isolation oftentimes it's a place of isolation oftentimes in this place this is where the Holy Spirit teaches you develops you trains you and prepare you for the office or the call that he has placed on your life this is where you learn the voice of God sometimes life is just too busy there's too much noise there's too much chaos there's too much comfort and so he pushes you out of your comfort zone so you can come into a place where you have to rely on him where you begin to learn the voice and the ways of God and this is exactly what happened in my life no when I got here I I started to pray more and over the previous um, months that I have been in training I have been uh, spending so much time in prayer I had shared with you guys before that prayer and intercession is the foundation the foundation of prophetic ministry you cannot be a prophet that does not pray it is natural praying and intercession is breathing for the prophet it is the oxygen of the prophet so when I got into Montego Bay I started to attend the church that my friend goes to which was a, a, a walking distance from the house so it wasn't anything that was too expensive and going here it was not the perfect fit considering coming from celebration of my former church it was not the perfect fit I did not have that ultimate uh, atmosphere that I was searching for it was it, nothing was wrong with the church it was okay but it was just not the, it was not the place that I needed to be in when you transition as a prophetic person when you're in your process of transitioning finding a church that you can settle in can be one of the hardest things I know that you want to be in an atmosphere that can recognize your gifting that can recognize your call and help to nurture you an atmosphere that will at least somewhat provoke you to see God even more when you get into that atmosphere it provokes you and it steers you to the point where you want to worship and see the face of God and so sometimes it can be a challenge I do not feel as though there needs to be any particular rush in trying to find or to settle in a church where as maybe you're going to take membership I think in this period you need to see God more than ever before and ask him where is it that he is leading you to because of course he's gonna lead you somewhere because accountability is very important when it comes to the prophetic ministry 
and when I started attending this church over a period of time I was there for a couple of months not long but uh, for, for a little while I started going to the church and I started you know praying for people here and there the young lady I was staying with she knew was called to the prophetic she had encountered me prophesying on a smaller scale to individualistic persons to her and so she's now calling me prophetess by no means am I calling myself prophetess I know I'm called to be a prophet of God but at no point did I feel as though okay I'm now there you should begin to call me as a prophet furthermore I did not appreciate a whole as a prophet of God I had fell out of school I had no money I became homeless and so many things were happening so it's almost like I did not want to be a prophet and this is something that I've come to learn the most genuine and authentic prophets that I know they did not pursue the prophetic they would rather to be doing something else more vocational than to actually be serving as a prophet of God because as a prophet you know you know you know you know what it is that the whole office actually entails and so it was not something that I was you don't have to call me prophetess that's completely fine but she started to do that and she started to you know introduce me to people as prophetess Shanique and prophetess um, Bella or whatever and it started to stick now this place is a demand on you because when you go ahead of your time and you put yourself out there as a prophet or as a prophetess then people are going to begin to address you as such it's and that's not even the whole issue that's not even the whole point people calling you a prophet is one thing but then they there is a level of expectation as a prophet what is the Lord saying as a prophet when you prophesy does 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 the does it actually come to pass and so it places a demand on the gifting and so I had to spend a lot of time in prayer that I would get to know the Holy Spirit even more no I was in a strange country and then I became I became a misfit I was going to the church over a consistent basis but I became a misfit the Holy Spirit started to speak to me even more and I started to learn the voice of God I started to prophesy it would come to pass there were a few weeks a consistent amount of weeks where so the Holy Spirit had set up this woman that was blessing me on a consistent period I had somehow I shared a word a prophetic word with her and she just started to bless me every single week I definitely felt as though this was the grace of God that was on my life because this money that I was getting consistently consecutively it has helped me to be able to purchase food to contribute to the bills of staying with my friend at her house and God has just been so tremendous in the entire journey I want to share with you that the same way in which God had told Abraham to leave from his own kindred with his family and going to a strange land wherever God is transitioning you to or relocating you to he's definitely going to set up someone there that will be a blessing to you he's not going to lead you into a place where he will not provide he's going to provide and he's always going to make a way for you his grace is more than sufficient to keep you in whatever it is that you're actually going through now over another period of time I was prophesying I was uh, sharing prophetic words instructions with people and it was coming to pass this is where I had one of my encounters of going to heaven where I laid on the lap of God and it was just an amazing experience I'll share that in some other videos sometime but it was a phenomenal phenomenal experience and it was absolutely one that changed my life so I encountered God I was now prophesying on a way more frequent basis I was preaching I got one of my first one of my first preaching engagements where I went to a New Testament church in Montego Bay to preach and upon preaching I was extremely nervous extremely scared anxiety it was everything in one it wasn't my first experience but it was my first preaching engagement in Montego Bay and after preaching I remember I was doing the altar call and I started to pray for persons I, pro I prophesied accurately and accuracy is not proof that you are prophetic accuracy is not proof that you are definitely a prophet because people can prophesy through different mediums and sources but considering that I'm sure that the Holy Spirit has been calling me 
speaking to me this was something that it was a blessing to know that God could actually use someone like me to prophesy something and people could actually confirm to say yes this is absolutely what is happening and after prophesying the thing would actually come to pass so God was just amazing so I do while doing the altar call a young lady started to manifest with a demonic spirit at that moment I thought I was finished I thought I was finished I've never I've never experienced I've been doing ministry and assisting serving a spiritual father for years 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 many many years but I've never been put in a situation or a position where I was the one who was going to cast a demon out or be used by God to cast a demonic spirit out when the demonic spirit began to manifest everyone was just there and I, I just started to command that demonic spirit to come out in the name of Jesus and the young lady started to vomit the spirits out it was it was truly an experience for me I went back to the church that I was visiting with my friend on another occasion there was another young lady where I was led to just put my scarf on the lady and the, and she just fell to the ground immediately demonic spirit started to manifest through her and when when the demonic spirit started to manifest I remember very clear and this is where I knew that this church was not for me and I was definitely a misfit it was not a prophetic church it was not one that there were a lot of prophecies or casting devils out or anything like that and I remember just as I was about to kneel down to cast the devils out and I do understand because protocol is protocol but I was told that there were many people that were there some were saying the blood of Jesus some were saying come out there were so many people that were saying so many confusing things and I remember I just went there and like there was so much noise and I had said okay can you can y'all just like calm down for a second just be quiet for a second because all that noise is not doing anything and I just started to command the devil to come out because no one was casting the devil out no one was trying to no one was able to and I did it now after that scenario happened I was told that if I'm going to do any form of ministry anything within the church that I needed to either take membership or join some um, I think evangelistic group or something of the sort and I was not ready to make that commitment to that church and so I just asked the Holy Spirit to help me something I want to point out to you guys is even though people were calling me prophetess even though I was no casting devils out, even though I was prophesying and it was coming to pass, I was having heavenly encounters, and God was using me on a more uh, frequent basis. People were sowing into my ministry. I never felt as though I was in the place where I needed to call myself prophetess. I was also never in the place where I felt like I needed to say, okay, I'm not going into full-time ministry. It was not the right timing. Timing is everything everything when it comes to the prophetic being trained and released are two different things so while you're being trained you're speaking you're, you're getting opportunities to speak but it does not necessarily mean that you're actually called to know go into full-time ministry one has to be very in very 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 careful of this so people are saying you're blessed you're anointed you're a prophet and all these wonderful lovely praises but I kept seeing myself as someone that did not have anywhere to live I I kept seeing myself as someone that had no money I had nothing my life was not put together and I was completely dependent on God and until God got me to a place of where I was able to stand on my two feet I did not see the need to say I'm going into full-time ministry and yes I'm a prophetess no I was still a nobody I was still trying to make two ends meet so I saw I saw through a peephole the possibilities that I could come into I saw a glimpse of what my future and destiny looked like but I was not living in that actual fulfillment or manifestation I was still just looking on what is actually to come and this is something that we have to be very cognizant of that we do not run ahead of our timing it is very important I was 
just getting to know God even more, I was more sure of myself and hearing the voice of God. And I remember, listen, knowing the voice of God for yourself is very important. Even as a young prophet, you can know the voice of God and the Holy Spirit can speak to you and through you. And you guys know the story in the book of Kings about the young prophet that the Holy Spirit told him, do not stop and eat anything from anyone on your way back. He met an older prophet that invited him to come in, eat and drink. And he went, of course. Sometimes as a young prophet, you may feel as though you need to respect the older prophets. You need to honor the older prophets and listen to what they say. And while respect and honor is a wonderful thing, knowing the voice of God and being more, more importantly obedient to God is even more important. So this young prophet went back to the older prophet, ate and drank. And then when he left, the older prophet said, um, Hey, by the way, you're going to die because the Holy Spirit told you do not stop and eat. My question to this has always been, as a senior prophet, as a matured, seasoned prophet, did you not see that this young prophet was going to die because the Lord told him not to stop and eat? Why did you invite him to stop and eat? It could have been a setup. It could have been a trap. Who knows? But what I'm saying is, as a young prophet, do not disqualify knowing the voice of God for yourself. Do not disqualify or be down on yourself or doubt yourself to knowing the voice of God. You, when you hear God, trust that you have heard God for yourself. So I was in a little, I was in a little prayer meeting in a car. I had two friends. Uh, both of them were a bit older than I was and they both wanted to get married. You know, when you're getting to that age, when you have passed that 30 mark or you are fastly approaching that 30 years old and your age is about to come off the calendar and you feel as though okay yeah I think it's time for me to get married no uh, what is heaven doing what is God doing so they had asked me to pray and we had prayed about um, marriage not for me but for them because they wanted to get married I was still young I think was about tw I was about 23 years old I um, I think I was about 23 years old and after praying, I prophesied and I said that very, very, very soon, someone is about to meet someone. His name is going to be Philip and God is sending this person, whatever God, whatever God sends this person to do, go ahead with it. I prophesied it in the line of finding a husband. Listen. The young man I had met when I just moved to Montego Bay that was staring. He had a business across from our house. When we were through praying, I went over to his business place to purchase something. And this man started to ask me to go on a date with him. At first, I didn't want to go. But after a while, I gave in. And I went on the date. My first date in Montego Bay. When I went on the date, I, I the whole Philip thing, I prophesied to the two young women that someone would meet someone by the name. Name of Philip when I went on the date I saw him and I, I was talking to him and I said by any chance is your name Philip and he said to me why were you asking and I said to him I just feel like to ask by any means is your name Philip and he said yes my middle name is Philip and I was completely taken aback and in my bonus I said okay um, you're my husband I mean can you imagine <laughs> Can you imagine just going on the first date with someone, the Holy Spirit has given the name, the person turns out to be the person you are dating, and not only so, but you know this person is going to be your husband, and you're boldly going to say to the person, you are my husband. I want you guys to leave a comment in the comment section. Please let me know what would you guys do. I know many of you would probably say I would pray to the Holy Spirit and I would ask God to tell him that I'm his wife. Um, I just said it. And of course, we did not get married um, very soon or very shortly. After it took some years, we dated, we courted. But something happened while we started to date. I remember I started to see the face of God. My husband was never the... Uh, spiritual type or someone that was he believed in God he was a Christian but he was never the type of person that was preaching or doing ministry or anything of that sort he had just lost his father and he was just not in the place that he really wanted to be in loss and grief is a terrible thing God rest his soul 
no i remember i started to ask god is this what you really have for me because at this point there were so many people that were condemning my relationship many persons were now starting to condemn my relationship because he was not what they were used to i feel as though social media presents what it seems like um, a ministry relationship is supposed to look like it has never been like that it is not like that and i'm not sure it is ever going to be like that where the male is the pastor or the prophet and the wife is the prophetess or the apostle or whatever it is it never has to be like that it is not always like that if you are a prophet your wife does not have to be a prophetess if you are an apostle your wife does not have to be the pastor your husband can be a minister he could be a counselor he could be an accountant he could be the IT technician a musician both of you do not have to be preaching and casting devils out and so I was being condemned for the relationship that I was in my spiritual father at that time was calling me and he was uh, saying I was told that she were pregnant and I, I was just completely appalled I had no idea why people would call my spiritual father and tell him that I was pregnant I was never pregnant I was never involved like that but it's a part of the journey people will say things people will spread lies and propaganda is just a part of the process and I remember it got to a point where people were saying to me that God says they said God said if I stayed in Montego Bay I would die so I remember I saw another young prophetess and she said that the Lord told her I need to go back to Kingston or I'm going to die if I disobey his voice I resorted to seeking someone else another powerful um, voice of God I was told the same thing and then I went on social media and there was a powerful apostle lady that I know and um, I asked her what is God saying concerning this situation and she said to me she prayed and she heard God and the Lord told her to tell me if I stay in Montego Bay I was going to die at this point I was completely in in this shock because I felt as though the first person that told me to come to Montego Bay I trust this voice so much and I searched I searched high and low for God and I felt as though I got the confirmation and I just obeyed God to come into Montego Bay as difficult as it was I moved into Montego Bay so then I was I was more I was a bit of I was a bit discouraged and it just did not sit so right with my spirit please understand that the first time I was told to move to Montego Bay I felt the go ahead I felt that I felt that propelling to go to move to transition and I never saw anyone else I just moved to Montego Bay no this was the fourth person that I was questioning and asking to help me to see God but it just did not sit well with me the first one did not sit well the second one did not sit well the third one the fourth one did not sit well and I kept saying why would God bring me to Montego Bay to kill me it just doesn't seem right but at the same time these persons have been known to be popular uh, prophetic accurate men of God men of God men of God and women of God that have been televised that people people can entrust and they have been accountable for all that I know and it just did not sit well with me I remember I had gone to a church where I was still trying to find a home church so so many things were happening all at once I was being told that if I stay in Montego Bay I'm going to die this man is not the man that God has for you to marry I have dated Christian men I have dated men that were preaching that were singing that were doing ministry that cheated not just cheated on me with one woman but more than one woman I've dated people that got other women pregnant while we listen I've just I've just seen so much and now I'm saying this person is not as spiritual as everybody would expect him to be but he's one that is faithful he's one where his heart is in the right place he's not one that prays in the most tongues and do the most but he knows God when he speaks he knows God and uh, I went to a church to visit where I felt like someone invited me and I felt like okay I would go and when I went you guys probably would have heard about the prophet in Montego Bay that died in a car accident and he was telling people they're going to go on the ark and they're going to whatever it is and he sacrificed a few people in Montego Bay I had visited this man's church at first 
I'm new to Montego Bay. I don't know much about the place. And I went and he called me out to prophesy to me. And when I went up, he had me stand at the pulpit for uh, maybe like an hour or so. Um, I assumed that he was trying to read me up or to get the information to say to me. But when he started to prophesy to me, uh, two things he said that was actually a curse. This man tried to curse me. And if you want to watch that actual um, video about the entire thing, it's very good. I'll link the video in the description box so you can watch that as well. He said to me that someone is trying to get you to come to Canada. And in that time, there was this lady that wanted me to come to Canada. She was like a spiritual mentor for me. She said she was my spiritual mother, but I did not co-sign with it. There were so many people that wanted to get their hands on me, that wanted to mentor me, that wanted me to be their daughter. But I, I just never felt that go ahead to go ahead and do that. I had one spiritual father since 2000 and about 2007 there about and I went and he said someone is trying to get you to come to Canada the lady was trying to get me to move to Canada and he said that if I go to Canada to do ministry there's a den of lions that's going to kill me if I go to Canada and then he said by the way they call you a prophet and I said yes they do call me a prophet he said you're not called to be a prophet and if you go into full-time ministry at any point in time you're going to go mad you're going to pull your hair from your head and you are going to eat it when I heard this I just went straight through the door he said that it would go viral in the newspapers and all over the place and that it would be as a test as a as a proof that he had prophesied it and I left as soon as I got through the doors of that church I never looked back my slippers broke out I had to walk from the door of that church to my house when that happened I went through the gate of the church my slippers broke out the Lord told me that uh, you're shaking the dust off from this place and every curse that has been placed upon your life is broken I had to find someone that prayed with me um, seriously to break that curse from my life this man is no dead he sacrificed a lot of his church members um, to gain more power whatever it is listen you have to know God for yourself no after all of these people said to me that uh, I'm going to die if I stay in Montego Bay, which I thought was very crazy. You may be young, but you can know the voice of God. I went to see a lady and when I got to the lady's house, she said that she was having a meeting where some prophets and apostles were coming. And she said, just wait here. They'll come and they'll probably prophesy and share with you what God is saying. They can truly be entrusted. I trusted her. She said, come to Montego Bay. I trusted her. And when the first lady came who was a prophetess, when she came up, she just, she looked at us. Before she said anything else, she said, tam, 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 tam. Tum, 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 tum. and she said you guys are going to get married I hear wedding bells you're gonna get married you're gonna have three children I don't know about the three children part but she said you're gonna have three children um, we were there the other person that was supposed to come we could not wait so we left and we met the man on the way while we were on the roads and waiting for a car to go home we met the man right there and he came up to us the other persons came to pick him up and we all met up together the same lady that prophesied and the one i went to meet with the man and he looked at us and they said to him can you pray for them he looked at us and he said hold hands my husband and i we held hands and he said i see you guys getting married and i see you guys having three children that was confirmation when i heard that it sat with my spirit i never moved back to kingston i stayed in montego bay um time went by we definitely got married uh we started our church um i'm gonna share that in the next video that will actually come up so there's so many things that I want to share with you guys, but what I want to, um, what I really want to share with you that will resonate with you and that will keep you as you're coming into your prophetic journey is that uh, because you are a younger prophet does not mean that you cannot hear God for yourself. 
even though some of these older and more senior or seasoned prophets say that they hear God on your behalf, you still need to seek God for yourself. If it does not sit right with your spirit, pray about it and seek God about it. I could have listened to these prophets and apostles and I could have gone back to Kingston and I would have aborted my entire purpose and my entire destiny. So you have to know the voice of God for yourself. You have to know God for yourself yourself I stayed in Montego Bay the Lord gave me a husband he told me his name and that was the next thing it, it, it was crazy that the Holy Spirit would reveal the name of my husband yet they they would say to me you can't stay in Montego Bay you can't marry this man it's just crazy now I saw someone made a comment under one of the episodes and they asked is it okay for you to marry in the process Certainly, if you're in the process, training or preparation, coming into the prophetic or any ministry at all, if God has sent you a spouse, I would definitely say if God has sent you the spouse, it is in his timing, absolutely go for it. Go right ahead for it. As a prophet of God, let no one tell you that you also have to marry a prophet. In many cases, there are prophets who marry prophets, uh, there are pastors that marry pastors, and that's completely okay. But if you find someone who does not preach, does not uh, speak in tongues as much, does not prophesy, whatever it is, that is completely fine. If God sends you a spouse, he's going to send someone that is compatible for you. I've seen some ministers that have said to me, why are you married to this man? He doesn't preach like you do. He doesn't do ministry like you do. And I'm thinking to myself, he doesn't do ministry. But in order for me to go and do ministry, he's the one that takes me there. He's the one that prays for me. He's the one that pours into me before I preach and after I preach. When no one else is there for me, I go to preach for many people across the entire country of Jamaica. And none of these people actually call to say how are you doing after you preach is everything okay can i pray with you but he is the one that prays to, he's the one that prays for me that prays back into me i've seen many pastors say why are you marrying this man he doesn't do this he doesn't do that and i've seen where their marriages have come to an end not that i'm rejoicing in this but i've seen where their marriage